Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at these laptops here. And, uh, well, the video is mainly about the one on the left, which is this one. Obviously, it's still a bit dirty. This is a Dell Latitude E6320. With a 13 inch display. And on the other side, we have an HP Elite Book. 2560p with a 12.5 inch display. These laptops share a lot of similarities but there are a couple of differences as well and uh, I'll just go over that in a moment. They're based on the same platform, they're both Sandy Bridge laptops, they both have the i5-2520M running at 2.5 GHz with two cores and four threads. And that's pretty much where all the similarities end. And uh, yeah, they have the same screen resolution of 1366 by 768. At first, I only owned that Elite Book over there. I wanted to make a video about it, but uh, there were a couple of problems with that machine that uh, I was trying to solve with the seller of the machine. At first, he promised me a pristine condition laptop for a very, very good price with original adapter. Uh, you know, AC adapter, 4 gigs of RAM and uh, a 320 gig hard drive, so basically the base spec of the machine anyway. That was fine. It also had a good battery, it said. And uh, yeah, a lot of those things were not quite true. And I'll show you what I mean. As you can tell, the battery is not sitting in there properly. When I first unboxed the laptop, I saw that the uh, battery just wouldn't detach if I use these sliders over here. But these sliders don't matter at all. See what I can do? Boom. Double-sided tape. Right there. It had two blobs of it. You can still see the residue here. As well as right there. And on the uh, Windows 7 key there as well. So there's that. One thing was spot on though. The battery is in excellent condition. But just, you know, the clip on it broke. So it's not actually pristine in that regard. Another thing to note, that was in the hard drive department. There we go. I took out the hard drive, by the way, there was a 250 gig instead of a 320. That's okay by me. But uh, as you can see, the caddy is missing. And all it had was, again, duct tape. This entire machine was just basically consisting of tape where it shouldn't be. And instead of 4 gigs of RAM, we only have 3. We have the original 2 gigabyte module here and a 1 gig instead of another 2 gig. It all sounds a bit nitpicky, I know, but... I was promised something pristine and it's just... it's not. There's all kinds of things wrong with it in order to really make it sort of pristine again. You'd have to invest more than a laptop is worth by a long shot. Other than that, if this machine is in decent condition. I mean, no real dents and blemishes and whatever, but... Just because of this entire ordeal, I was just feeling so salty about it, I just decided to uh, say fuck it and uh, jump on the next best thing that I could find for the same price, which is this Dell Latitude E6320. It has a slightly larger display, 13 versus 12.5. The battery is not in as great condition, it's a much smaller battery. So it lasts about an hour, that, that's okay, I don't really need to use it on uh, battery power all that much, I just need to have it functional. So that requirement is met. Um, other than that, this machine's pretty good shape as well. It's a bit dirty, it definitely needs a bit of a clean. There's some small smudges here, there's a small dent in the lid here. Of course this is magnesium versus uh, aluminum. So there's a bit of a difference as well on the bottom. There's not really all that much uh, worth of scratching, <clears throat> so that's good. And on the side, just your typical blemishes and whatnot. Just some small scuffs, really. Nothing major. These laptops are also built like tanks. They don't have a mil spec grade like the Elite Book does, but this is definitely good enough. Very much good enough for me. So let's take a better look at the 60. To 30 or 6320 numbers. Uh, here on the back we have the AC input, we have a Kensington lock port, we have a mini HDMI, where's that micro? 
think that's mini HDMI. Gigabit Ethernet. We have two USB ports here, which is this one is a combo ESATA USB slot. Here is an express card slot with the blank missing, Wi-Fi toggle, of course the optical drive as you can pull out like that. On the other side of the laptop we find the tray for the hard disk with a smart card reader, a vent for the CPU fan, 3.5mm jack, VGA, and that's all there is to it. Oh, and by the way, yeah, right here in the front we have an SD card reader. Can we get that in? There we go. This laptop is slightly harder to work on. It's not a matter of sliding the panel off straight away. You have to take out a couple screws, but then you can access basically all the main components. One major difference between this and the EliteBook is that the CPU in the Latitude is soldered, and it's not on the EliteBook. In the Elite Book, you can still upgrade it to uh, like a 2630QM or whatever. This one will, well, it'll really stuck with what uh, what it came from, what it came with from the factory. Both, of course, Windows 7 era laptops from about 2011. And uh, yeah, overall great machine. This machine has 8 gigs of RAM for the same price as I got, well, 3 gigs in that one. So that's great, it's a good deal. Also had a 160 gig drive, uh, which was a Western Digital Scorpio Black, which is decent, 7200 RPM, but uh, I put in a 240 gig SSD that I had laying around, a Kingston UV400, I think, and uh, it's uh, definitely very fast. One thing that I've already got on the way in terms of upgrades is the keyboard. This is a Scandinavian keyboard. While that is okay for the overall letters and layout, I'm actually fine with that. Uh, it's not a backlit keyboard and it is slightly worn, so I decided to get uh, the cheapest backlit keyboard I could find that would be an official Dell part. So I got one with the UK layout, which is closer to the US international layout than the Scandinavian one here is. So, uh, so there's that. And then I have a backlit keyboard, which is neat. So let's turn it on, right? By the way, the palm rest in the entire area around the keyboard is, is rubberized, <clears throat> much like the top of uh, ThinkPad laptops. And the internal ring here is basically plastic with a, a metal uh, fit and finish uh, feel to it. But it's definitely plastic. In order to get the keyboard out, you basically have to pry that, that uh, area off and I just a couple screws and boom, you're in business. So as you can see, it boots up pretty quickly. And what I intend to do with this laptop is actually run uh, Mac OS on it. Right now I'm testing it in Windows 7 to verify that everything is working properly. Just for the time being. I don't really have uh, that much time to uh, mess with it right now. I'll just uh, do a quick login here. Nice and crunchy. Well, let's turn the display brightness down a bit. Take a better look at it. There we go. Not much I can do about that screen flicker though. But either way, let's go through the properties. And I'll do a proper zoom. Wow, that's even worse. Remarkable. The viewfinder is adjusting for the brightness, so there we go. That should be good. And now we can see what's going on. So as you can see, we have the Intel Core i5 2520M CPU, 2.5 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 megabytes or thereabouts are gone to the uh, Intel HD 3000 graphics. I swapped out the Wi-Fi card for a Dell Wireless uh, 1510 because that's actually natively supported in Mac OS and the included Intel Centrino Ultimate uh, is not. Intel graphics don't work on Mac OS at all, I mean Intel uh, Wi-Fi. Intel graphics of course are no problem at all. So yeah, so basically there you have it. The Dell Latitude E6320. 
the next video you'll probably see with this machine is from it uh, running Mac OS. And uh, that should be good. Should be a very nice ride. I've tried down the Elite Bug, by the way, and that was just a hell. I mean, I could, in I could install Mac OS just fine, but it just couldn't get the audio running. I couldn't get the, obviously, the Wi-Fi running because it had Intel wireless as well. Um, also, some other things that just wouldn't work properly. And I'm told that these latitudes are much easier in that regard, so we'll be seeing it running CRR, high CRR, I presume. But that'll be for the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.